Dennis Kelkin. Okay, um, well, let's start off with A4. The Sicilian. We go for the open Sicilian. He's playing classically so far. Ah, the early A6. Uh, the O'Kelly variation, I think. You're supposed to play C3 against it. And um, that's about all I know. <laughs> the idea is to try and make this uh, a6 move be not so useful. If you just play normal moves, he can go for a knight orphan. That turns out to be a useful move there. Um, so what to do here? Maybe just um, castle king side. He hasn't even developed his knight yet. Pushing all those pawns. So it seems like... Um, Just uh, defending the center here and getting my pieces out should lead to a decent position. Yeah, so he's not even going to trade this knight off. If he trades the knight off, the idea of c3 is you take back with the pawn, you have a big center. Um, he's not even bothering to challenge the knight there, so that means uh, I don't get the big center, but I get a nice uh, piece here. So let's uh, develop the bishop. See, if I go to um, f4, you can play e5 and fork my pieces, so probably that's not the square to put it on. I guess just uh, keeping keeping this diagonal a little bit protected here, so sudden, sudden attacks don't uh, cause too much trouble. Now the knight. I can get this knight into the game somehow. Here, to here, to here. One, two, three, and then to this square. It's kind of a long way to get there. It's a problem when you've played c3. Or I could come here to here. d2 to b3. Or d2 to f1 to uh, g3. So, uh, which, which route is best? Well, let's delay that decision. Let's put a rook opposite the queen. That's always always a good idea. Now b3 shoring up the uh, knight b3 shoring up my knight looks attractive. But at the same time I could bring this other knight to b3 and put a bishop there to challenge his bishop. Let's get my king off of this diagonal. Let's see. The um, my e pawn is attacked twice. So that means <clears throat> I can't just play f4. It's only defended once. If I play e5, he can just take it. How about if I play um, a4 here? Maybe undermine that advanced b pawn. Try and prove that that was a, a mistake that early queenside pawn advance. And uh, if he pushes, I can take with a tempo on his queen. Plus my knight is protected anyway, and it's not under attack. So I'm not afraid of pushing. If he takes, then I'll have pressure against his uh, a pawn there. He ignores it. Oh, he attacks my knight. Not quite the same as ignoring it. So if I take here, he takes my knight, I take back. Yeah, that's no good. I could go to... Uh, oh, I see. I don't have any great squares, do I? <laughs> when I retreat the knight, uh, it blocks the queen's view of uh, a4. So that's kind of annoying. Anyway, bring the knight here, try and get back into the game via C. Via C4 there. And of course I can put pressure on uh, his, uh, oh, his bishop is pinned there if this uh, C file would open up, isn't it? I wonder if there's a tactic there. So 
It's also knight c4, just threatening the um, <clears throat> threatening the backwards d pawn. That classic Sicilian weakness. And his bishop is kind of, uh, his dark squared bishop is kind of stuck here, and his light squared bishop isn't doing a whole lot. So I think all in all is still a fine position for me. Yeah, so he pushes forward. Pretty logical. If he takes with the knight, I'm just going to drop my bishop back. I want to uh, keep the bishop pair. See, this bishop could go to um, g3 here, put some pressure on the center, pin that pawn against the queen. Might be interesting. Yeah, but that gives up, um, well, it doesn't give up e3. It weakens e3. The knight's still defending e3. Knight e3 I have to watch out for. Yep. Yeah. So let's get the queen off of off of that uh, D file, put a rook there. Still maintain control of that E3 square so 93 doesn't uh, come with a nasty shock. And let's see what black can do here to improve his position. Ah, so he wants to trade off my light squared bishop. I can't really prevent that, so let's just continue. Let's continue with rook to d1. This is not the, my best bishop anyway. And um, that was kind of a nice knight that he gave up to get that bishop. He can play bishop to um, b5 there pinning my knight against my queen. Um, I can pile up on the uh, <clears throat> I can pile up on the um, um, e pawn there. He was threatening something. He was threatening knight takes knight, knight takes knight, bishop to um, b4. I guess it wasn't b5 is, you know, skewer of the queen and the rook there. It wasn't, I guess, a huge threat. But um, it was something. So um, where's the best place to go with the queen? I go here. It's kind of blocking my bishop, but the bishop is going to move anyway. So we have a... Um, oh, I could have taken his bishop. That's probably would have been better. <clears throat> Take that bishop and get my pawn back. He could skewer along this row and get the pawn, so maybe it wouldn't have actually won the pawn back, but I should have thought about it, as they say. Okay, so more pressure on the e-pawn. Let's see if I can do something on the dark squares here. I do have that dark squared bishop, so if I push here, and he pushes, I will take. He takes, I will take. And um, he's got a weakness on f, f6. If he doesn't take, I'll take. If he pushes, I also have the idea of pushing with a tempo on his queen. takes uh, there's also this check here so he uh, defends
Yeah, I expect him to take with the knight. Yeah. <clears throat> so now that that's happened, if I take here, he'll take with the rook, I guess. Knight is looking at this square, this square, this square. He does have knight to um, d3 hitting my rook, so it's a tempo. Let's, uh, yeah, knight d3 is a fork if I go there. I was thinking I wanted to protect the, uh, the b-pawn. Knight d3 also forks the rook and the... Uh, and the pawn on b2. And um, on f2, I was looking at f6, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem so great. I wonder if I need to take it. Well, there, if he goes to d3 now, I can trade rooks with check. And I can take the uh, knight and get a, two pieces for a rook. <clears throat> and I'm kind of indirectly looking at the f6 pawn here. And also, I have a chance to get my queen on the light square there and check his uh, king. Hmm, yeah, so he's not going to let me do that. So I still have to be careful about this knight uh, e3 idea. Well, if I go here to f4 and he plays knight e3, I can take his queen. So that's a pin. And it is looking at f6, so... Maybe that's worth something. <clears throat> so he takes there first. Okay, let's take back. Yeah, black is playing a really good game here so far, seems to me. Okay, so I can take with check. <clears throat> and he has to take with the queen. And then he's setting up this uh, back rank issue, taking advantage of the back rank. I have a problem there. But uh, while I take with check, he takes, and I can play a or h3. Uh, so he gets the check, and I go king h2 should be okay and his f pawn is still hanging so at some point i should be all right here so queen bishop and knight against queen bishop and knight and we have opposite colored bishops and i'm still a pawn down from that earlier uh, <laughs> a a4 pawn sacrifice or uh Missed, missed tactic where you went upon to be more accurate. So yeah, he can come down and give the check, but I uh, after that he has to do something about f6. Okay, so he defended f6 first. So why don't I come over here and <clears throat> pile up on his bishop. Still the check. I go to h2, it's not a problem. So he brings his queen in there, but that uh, gives up the back rank. He's probably trying to line up his queen and his bishop. I mean, not the back rank. It gives up this. He just goes there. So if I trade... It's not so great. If I trade, so maybe uh, 
Dropping the queen back to here. Yeah, here I'm thinking of just taking the uh, bishop. His knight is defended by the queen, so knight takes knight, bishop takes, or queen takes is fine. So knight takes bishop, pawn takes, queen takes, and then uh, I'm defended here. So unless there's some uh, discovery that I missed here, it seems like I get I get my pawn back after all. And I'm hitting this pawn. The knight is safe. So it's a bishop versus knight endgame. Two versus one over here and three versus two over here. Interesting endgame. And queen's on the board. You can't actually take this pawn because he will take... Um, he will take b2 if I take here. I mean, I could do that. I mean, that's the simplest. Uh, there's the other idea of playing b3 here. Hitting the knight. Pawn takes, queen takes. And the knight is pinned, but I can't easily exploit that pin. So if I take and knight takes, where do I go next? Just back to... Uh, Maybe I go to um, the C file here. My idea is to play um, queen here and then force a trade of queens. That's why I went to the C file to get access to the C7 square. Force the trade of queens and then play with bishop versus knight and an outside passed pawn. So this should be winning, finally. But, uh, well, it takes time and I have to prove it. I have to prove that it's a win. Okay, so is knight. Where can that knight go? So he's putting all of his um, pawns on dark squares. These two pawns are on light squares to begin with, so that, that's sort of one of those things that happens hard to prevent. But ultimately, I think this will be good for me, right? Ah, he's going after that pawn. Okay, well, let's trade pawns then. A real knockdown drag out battle. He got an advanced pawn here, so he's done well here. So maybe the end game was not so easy as I thought. So we're down to just uh, one bishop and uh, one knight. Okay, so let's throw in a check here. Okay, if I check here to drive his king back, and he takes. Takes my pawn, I take his pawn. It's going to be a draw, but I don't think I have anything better. So, ah, uh, he let me get away with it. Okay. And I will uh, play for a win. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's no way either of us can win, actually. His king is right in front of my pawn, and my king is too close to his pawn, so there's nothing he can do. He should have just traded. Make it simpler. At any time, you know, I can um, take this pawn, and then it's a draw. <laughs> How's he going to win with the knight? That's pretty foolish. He offers a draw. Okay, <laughs> so that was a draw. Anyway, that was an interesting game. I will upload this and uh, check it out in the postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.